Hi, welcome to New Hope Community Church Online. The sermon you are about to hear was originally given by Pastor Chuck Wilson. New Hope Community Church, to know, to live, and to share Jesus Christ. The title is A Christ-like Response to Immigrants. In Joshua chapter 20, 1 and 2. Now, I was, I was a little afraid to do this sermon because uh, I'm just going to say, hear me out, don't run out, hear me out till the very end, and also go home and meditate on it, pray about it, then call me up and yell at me if you don't like what I said. But, but anyway, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give, a, I think, a, a different perspective than, than most of us maybe even have thought about. Uh, most, very different than most of the cultures thought about, that's for sure. But there's this firestorm in the news about immigrants and the immigration crisis and the illegal immigrants and all this. And it's been impacting Europe for years. They've already been swamped. It's changed the face of Europe already. But now we're seeing in the U.S. daily images in the news of, of immigrants and immigration and really Im- illegal immigrants. We're seeing this daily images of children to be separated from their parents. And the immigration complications are nothing new. Refugees have been, are a historical fact. From the beginning of time, there's been refugees and and crises and all kinds of things that spark refugee crises. Uh, In fact, in the Bible, it addresses refugees quite often. It talks about the foreigner and the alien many, many times. And in Joshua chapter 20, and I just got through the first verse. We're going to come back to the rest of it next, the rest of the chapter next week. But it says, then the Lord said to Joshua, uh, actually, one and two, uh, tell the Israelites to designate the cities of refuge as I instructed you through Moses. Cities of refuge. And if you know, refuge is where we get refugees from, right? They're for refugees. Next week, we're going to see, going to go into detail about what this is specifically talking about. This is talking about ref, a refuge for a specific purpose and a specific person. But this is a good jumping off point to go into other places in the Bible for today's discussion. And uh, I think, um, well, let's ask God to help us with this. Father, we just pray that your spirit would speak to us and we would have hearts of mercy and grace for the pastor and for every, (laughs) and for for all the people that are, are struggling out there for whatever reason. Father, we pray that we would be like Christ, and we would also have a biblical worldview. We'd be discerning with this. We pray that in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. I'm going to talk about the government's responsibility first, and then I'm going to talk about our responsibility as Christians. And they're very, two very different things. It's very, very important to, to understand both if we're going to be Christian citizens here. Our government has a a responsibility to protect our country. That's the government's responsibility. And our immigration laws are meant to regulate the flow of people into the United States. That's what the immigration laws are meant to do, to regulate it in a healthy way. Open borders may appeal to some, I know even some of you, we've discussed this, may appeal to some, but, but it's not wise and it's not practical. Open borders, it just, it, it just, it's, it, it's not wise or practical unless you want to collapse the country. No country can survive, in the present condition, can survive open borders. It just doesn't happen. It would overload the country. Just think of health care alone. If you bring in wide open masses of people and, and, and just health care. Look at what health care is struggling now. I know what's happened to our coverage and what it's costing us just with this different system. And just that alone, taxes would skyrocket because money has to come from somewhere, right? It's got to come from somewhere. So that, that's an issue. Um, so our government has laws to regulate immigration, which has come under very heavy criticism lately. But I always tell people, if you don't like a law, you work to change it. We don't break the law. That causes anarchy, no matter what the law is. It causes anarchy. You work to change it. That's what democracy is all about. And this immigration problem did not start under the current president. I'm not going to use president names. I'm going to refer to different. You know, it's not, it did not start under the current president. Our last president enforced the same exact immigration laws. Same exact. But where is the outrage? 
Where was it last time? Now, hear me out. I'm going to go a lot of places with this. Uh, the, picture, the picture of these kids in cages that were all over the Internet and all over the media, all over. Those pictures, turns out, were taken when our last president was the president. Did you know that? Those pictures of kids in cages that were all over were from when our last president was the president. And that's why they were removed very quickly. They stopped using them because that was a deceptive tool. This is, I'm, 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 just hang on here. It's been a problem for a long time. And I think we can all agree that kids should not be separated from their parents. Isn't that something everybody in America should be able to agree on? We shouldn't, be able, we shouldn't separate kids from their parents. We either let the whole family in or we send the whole family back home together. Whatever we decide, whatever our laws are, whatever we do, they should be together, they should be kept together. It's craziness what they've done. What's been, do, been done for a long time and now all of a sudden, you know, the media got religion and they don't want kids separated from their parents, right? But, but let's, let's be truthful. Most, not, let's be truthful, most of the media just wants to undermine the present president. They're just trying to undermine him. And I'm not trying to defend him. I'm not, you know, I, I've got mixed feelings about every president we've ever had. That's not my point. My point, though, let's tell the truth. They're just trying to undermine the present president. Where were they when the last president was enforcing these same exact laws and put kids in cages? Where was the media outrage? And when the president recently, a few days ago, changed the laws and changed the policy about no longer separating them, the media didn't get many, just kept attacking, attacking, because it's really not about these kids. They're using deception, and you can't trust and believe most of the media. Unfortunately, you can't. This cover on Time, I don't know if you've been following the Time magazine cover, president looking down at this little crying child because, you know, he, he's separated this child from his parents. The truth has come out about that picture. This is just, I'm just showing how it's propaganda. Don't, we have to have a biblical worldview and discernment and understand what's really happening. And because otherwise the trust is broken and you can't work together to, to find the truth and work to true, uh, pro, you know, solving these things. That little girl who was crying, it came from another picture. Her mother was being arrested uh, and, and, they were, and then they superimposed the president is looking down at her mean and she's crying. And it was it's a very sad picture. But the truth is the truth has come out exposed by another media outlet who's also against the president, but they're happy to attack each other. And it turns out that they found the father. And, that, and the whole story came out, that little girl was never separated from her mother. Never. She was separated by two feet. That was it. She was not separated. Did you know that? She wasn't separated from her mother. And not only that, the, um, she was crying because her mother was, you know, stopped at the border and, you know, they're, you know, arresting her and gonna, you know, she had already been, the mother had already been deported once. The mother was the one who was doing the separating. The father has now come out publicly. I believe he's from Honduras. And he's come out publicly and said, the one who's doing the separating is my, the, the mother. We have three children together. And she took my little daughter and went off to the United States. And I said, don't leave. We, we, we don't leave. Don't take her away. It's dangerous. And, and we, we, I don't want her to not see her. Keep her here. The mother is the one who separated the family. Ripped the little girl away from her family. That's the truth. Now, I, once again, I'm saying I don't want families separated. I don't want them separated by a government. And I don't want them separated by, you know, any other way. You know, families breaking up. I don't want them separated. They shouldn't be, kids shouldn't be separated from their parents, whether it's the government or whether it's them. So, I want us to come up with a compassionate solution to this crisis. Most illegal immigrants that I know, now immigrants is a whole different thing, I'm talking about illegal, most that I know are hardworking, they're law-abiding, not all, but most of them are law-abiding, moral people. I've been very impressed with most of the illegal immigrants that I know, and I have lots of friends that I know that are illegal. I know they are. I've even helped some of them talk to lawyers and try to get legalization because that's important. But the most, I think we need to find a path to citizenship for these people that have been here for so long. I think it's, it's just the compassionate thing to find a, a, a quick path to citizenship for these people that are law-abiding. I think the ones that are breaking these laws, you're seeing all these gangs and stuff, get, get, they don't have any right to this country, right? 
uh, the ones that are killing people and gangs and all that stuff. I'm not talking about that, but I'm talking about the, the, the hardworking, law-abiding, moral people. I've been very impressed with most of the, these people. And I hope that we can find a way to legally regulate our borders. We, I think we have to lawfully regulate our borders. We have to find a way to do that in a better way, but at the same time, find a way to allow more folks in legally. We could allow more in legally. And they're uh, such positive people to let in. And, and a lot of them need a place. They, they're in very difficult situations in their home countries. I would really like to see us uh, let more people in lawfully. Whatever we do with a quota, come up with a better way more letting more in. But I'm going to say this before I get to the Christian. I'm going to say this. The media and most of the people attacking our president over this issue are hypocrites. Total hypocrites. Most. They, not all, but most, they don't care about these children. They're just using them. Not everybody. There's a lot of people that do, but I'm talking about most of the media and most of the people, they're just using them. They attack the president, our president, under the guise of not wanting kids separated from their parents. Why do I say they're hypocrites and why do I know they're not being honest? Because these same people who support because these are the same people, the ones who are trying to say we shouldn't separate their children and attacking the I'm just about the attacking the president part. These are the same people who support separating babies from their mothers by the millions. Let's tell the truth. They are 100% supporters of abortion, which not only separates the baby from the mother, but murders the baby. And you, get, you expect me to believe you care about these kids? Are we buying this lie? Don't buy the lie that the media and the politicians and most of these people who are pro-abortion care about children. They don't. Can you imagine if, what would happen if these, the media and these same politicians and these same people, what would happen if they rallied to save babies? Unborn children? Can you imagine what would happen overnight in this country? We could do away with abortion overnight. Because the other half is already fighting for that. If this group joined, we well, just think about what we could do. Then we could trust these people. Trust what they're saying and really help all children, born and unborn. Now, having said that, we as Christians, I did the government... I did the garbage, now I'm going to do the, the Christians. We as Christians, we don't get caught up in the politics. We don't believe the lies. We don't get caught up in the politics because we have a higher calling, a much higher calling. The Christian perspective is not a Republican perspective. It's not a Democratic perspective. It's driven by a biblical worldview. Because there's problems with both sides and this, this, this issue, isn't there? Both sides are not perfect on this issue. We have a higher calling. We're driven by a biblical worldview. In our worldview, Leviticus 19, in Leviticus 19, verse 34, I'm going to read a couple different passages here. This is what God says about immigrants. Whether they're legal or illegal. This is what he says. In Leviticus 19, verse 34, it says, The alien living with you must be treated as one of your native born. Love him as yourself, for you are aliens in Egypt. I am the Lord, your God. Deuteronomy 26. In Deuteronomy 26, verses 12 and 13, it says, When you have finished setting aside a tenth of all your produce in the third year, the year of the tithe, you shall give it to the Levite, the alien, the fatherless, and the widow, so that they may eat in your towns and be satisfied. Then say to the Lord your God, I have removed from my house the sacred portion and given it to the Levites, the alien, the fatherless, and the widow, according to all you commanded. I have not turned aside from your commands, nor have I forgotten any of them. Hebrews 13.2. In Hebrews 
it says, and this is uh, New Testament, but it's talking about the same idea. Do not forget to entertain strangers, for by so doing, some people have entertained angels without knowing it. Just as the government has a job to do, we as Christians have a job to do. We have a job to do. Our job is to minister to the immigrant. Whether they're legal or illegal, our job, our calling is to minister to the immigrant. To show the love of Jesus Christ to them by meeting their needs. And there's so many needs out there. To meet their needs, to show the love of Jesus Christ and to share the love of Jesus Christ with them. The mission field has come to us. The mission field has come to us. There, it's an amazing mission field that we have in this country. It's the fifth largest mission field in the world now. Did you know that? It's come to us. And that's what we're called to do. To show the love of Jesus Christ and to share the love of Jesus Christ. Do we as Christians, do we have a Christian attitude toward all immigrants, both legal and illegal? Do we have a Christian attitude? Who has God put into our life? Who has he put in our life? How can we minister to them with the love of Jesus Christ? Do we see them as, you know, as, as through a, a, you know, a, a political lens or a media lens? Or do we see them as human beings that God has brought into our, our path and into our life to show the love of Jesus Christ? And do we see them as someone who needs the love of Jesus? Maybe God will start, will call you to, to reach out to someone and to really help them. Maybe God will lead you to start a ministry. Something that starts small and could become very big. Helping adopt immigrants and their families as, as churches and as Christians and in meeting their needs and helping them become self sufficient, which is what they want to be. They're hard workers. The ones I know are really hard workers. Maybe God will cause you to, to, to start a ministry that could just have a huge impact. Will we start to pray for the chance to share Jesus Christ with them? Will we start to pray, say, God, send, put people into my path. Show me who to reach out to, how I can help people. Are we looking for those opportunities? And having said that, remember something. We were all aliens at one time. Not necessarily aliens in this country, USA, but we were all spiritual. A lot of you were. A lot of us are from different countries. You know, nothing to be ashamed. It's awesome. We love it. But all of us were spiritual aliens at one time. We were foreigners at one time to God. Did you know that? Ephesians 2.19 says this. In Ephesians 2.19 it says, Consequently, you are no longer foreigners and aliens. You all were aliens. He says, consequently, you are no longer foreigners and aliens, but fellow citizens with God's people and members of God's household. At one time, because of our sin, we were all separated from God. We were cut off from him. We were all separated from citizenship in God's kingdom. And we had no right to uh, look forward to a future with God someday in heaven. We were completely cut off now and forever. Every one of us, we were there. But Jesus made a way for us to reconnect. Jesus made a way for us to reconnect with God. Jesus made a way for us to become citizens of heaven. And to be in the family of God. To become children of God. To be adopted into God's kingdom. God, Jesus made a way for us to do that. Ephesians, we're at Ephesians 2.19. We just back up a couple of verses and it tells us how that can happen for us. Verse 8, Ephesians 2 verse 8 says, For it is by grace you are saved through faith, and this not from yourselves, it is the gift of God, not by works so that no one can boast. 
It's not something we can earn. <laughs> it's not something we can work our way into. It's not something we deserve. It's only by God's grace, putting our faith in God's grace. And what was that grace? When his son Jesus died on a cross in our place for our sin, took our punishment, paid the price to get us, into, get us citizenship so we can become legal citizens in God's sight. God sent his son Jesus to pay that price. And we, by putting our faith, our trust, our hope in Jesus, we become citizens. We become children of God, and we, we have now a promise that we'll have etern, eternal citizenship in heaven with God someday. Have you put your faith in Jesus Christ? Have you ever made peace with God? Have you ever become his child by putting your faith in Jesus Christ? And, now, and then as Christians, maybe, maybe you've already done that, but as Christians, we weren't just saved so we can get into heaven someday. That's not why we were saved. That's not why we got right with God. That's not why he made us his children. It wasn't just, that was a big, it's an awesome thing. Don't get me wrong, it's awesome. But that's not the only reason. There's also, he's also given us a very important purpose. He's given us a very important job to do. Ephesians 2, 8, 9, for it is by grace, well, I'm going to do the next verse too now. For, if 2, 8, 9, for it is by grace you are saved through faith, and this not from yourselves, it is a gift of God, not by works so that no one may boast. For, we, a lot of times we leave this one out, for we are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. We have a job to do. God has a very important purpose for every one of our lives, and it involves good works. It involves good works. Very, very important. Good works don't save us. We see that, right? They don't save us. We're saved by faith. But they follow salvation. Good works don't save us, but it shows that our faith is real. It follows. If, if we really put our faith in Jesus, our life will change and we'll live in a way that God, God wants us to live. And, and there'll be changes in our life and we'll start to impact people for Jesus Christ. That's Real faith. It, it shows that our faith is real. In fact, in James two fourteen to 17, very convicting passage in light of our refugee discussion here. James says, What good is it, my brothers, if a man claims to have faith but has no deeds? Can such a faith save him? Suppose a brother or sister is without clothes and daily food. If one of you says to him, go, I wish you well, keep warm and well fed, but does nothing about his physical needs, what good is it? In the same way, faith by itself, is, if it is not accompanied by actions, is dead. Real faith in Jesus results in a changed life that lives out a faith that touches other people where we share the love of Christ we show the love of Christ in every area of life, their physical and spiritual needs. Who is God calling us to show real love to, real faith to? What is he calling us to do for Jesus Christ? You never know. You take that first step and you never know what could happen. How many lives can be touched? Whether God's called us to touch one life or millions of lives, we don't know when we take that step of faith what his calling is. Let's pray. As we go to this time of prayer, and once again, we always have a prayer team up here ready to pray for you during the prayer, during the worship, after the service, for an hour after, whatever it takes. There's always a team to pray, people to pray with you. How is God speaking to you? How is he speaking to us this morning? Maybe it's an attitude that we have that's, that's not right, that's not Christ-like. Maybe it's about our actions or lack of actions. Maybe it's about compassion. Having compassion on people. Christ-like compassion. Maybe he's putting someone in our mind right now that we know that needs that compassion. Maybe, maybe even it's an immigrant. Maybe it's an illegal immigrant. 
that he's putting on our heart that we could start to befriend and to reach out to and find ways that we could minister to them and get them connected with a church, maybe even our church, but maybe it's a church where they have the a, a, a native language that they could, they could use. That we could show real faith to these people, to someone that God's calling us to touch. Maybe you can't show faith yet because you've never put your faith in Jesus. The first step is taking the step of faith in putting your faith in Jesus. And maybe this morning is the day that you take that step of faith, for it is by grace you are saved through faith. And this not from yourselves, it is a gift of God. Have you ever received that gift? To receive that gift, you have to give something up. You have to be willing to give up sin. You have to be willing to give up rebellion and to give up disobedience. To give up the garbage in our life. You have to be willing to give that up. It's called repentance. Is God speaking to you about repenting? Say, God, I repent of the sin, the garbage. Anything in my life that goes against your word, I repent of it. I ask you to forgive me. Because I'm putting my faith in Jesus Christ. I trust in Jesus. What he did on that cross, I put my faith in him. I give my life to him. If you have prayed that prayer of faith, then something amazing has happened. You are now a child of God. You're no longer an enemy. You're no longer a foreigner or an alien. You no longer have to fear just as someone is in a country that's not their citizenship. They, they're afraid. They're, there's always fear. But you don't have to be afraid because you are now a child of God. Your citizenship is in heaven. You now have a close relationship with God the Father through his son Jesus. I want to encourage you to let somebody know that you've put your faith in Jesus. Let somebody know. Maybe you're here with a family member, a friend. Tell me on the way out. Fill out the card. Let somebody know. Because we'll be excited for you. Father, I pray that each person here would know what it's like to be your child. And I pray that the love of Jesus, the same mercy and grace that we received, that we would become vessels of sharing that mercy and grace. Lord, we don't want to be our minds molded by the world or fall for the deception and and the lies, but at the same time, we do want to have a, 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 a heart of mercy and grace. We pray that in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you.